All right, guys, welcome to my review of Watch Dogs Legion. So after playing it for a while, and basically after a month, I have finally finished it thanks to Ubisoft actually taking the time to fix their damn game. But I have finished it, and in this video, I'll go through what I feel about this game and what I would give, what score I would give this game. Now, I have no false expectations. I know not many people are going to watch this video. But in case you are watching, then I appreciate it and I really like you guys. So yeah, thank you for watching my videos. And if you are someone who is finding this randomly, then do consider subscribing to my channel because I do put out a lot more content. Well, anyway, there with the intro out of the way, uh, just I would go for go through the structure of this review and this review is going to be divided into five sections. First one would be story, then we will have gameplay, then performance and stability. And number four, I will be summing up what I've said. And the fifth part of the video will be giving it a final score. Now, without any further delay, let's just go ahead and start with the story. Now, this story uh, is mediocre at best. Like, seriously, it is mediocre. Now, that doesn't mean there are no good spots in the story. It's just that the main narrative is so horribly dull that it just isn't worth it. But there are a few good arcs. The Sky Larson arc was a, actually a very good one because I really enjoyed that. Uh, the Sir's missions, they were really good. It felt like I was playing a game based on James Bond and it felt really nice. Uh, so yeah, that was really cool. And also, towards the end, I'm not going to spoil anything by the way, there, is, there are no spoilers in this uh, video because I still haven't finished the series myself in my own channel, so I'm not going to spoil anything. But yeah, there are a few sections, especially towards the end, uh, which are kind of good, I'm not going to lie. But even those are kind of uh, downplayed a bit because there are hardly any consequences to, to that. And as for the other storylines, the Albion bad guy, what was his name? Uh, I can't even remember his name, he's that forgettable. He was just bad. Nigel Cass, yes. He was just bad. Like, he's so generic and the dialogues that he's saying is so generic and so cheesy that it made me laugh more than I, it made me appreciate that person as a character. So, yeah, there was that. Then the Clan Kelly one, there was a particular mission in the game where you uh, go into a slave auction. There are some serious watchdogs, one vibes there. And yeah, that brought back some memories of a very good mission that was in Watch Dogs 1. And I again do not want to spoil this, but there is a twist there in the story. But then again, I saw it coming from a mile away. It is so obvious that I saw it coming from a mile away. And that is me with my level of intelligence. So yeah. Uh, you're probably going to see it right through but that's where the story is so story is mediocre i really wish they would have invested more of their time in telling more stories like the sky larsen arc because that was honestly very good that felt um, you know how many people were saying that this essentially every chapter is like a black mirror episode the sky larsen one actually is like a good black mirror episode so yeah more like that if we had more like that more things unique like that and more of these uh, impacts of technology and how and what sacrifices we have to make to get that technology. I think that would have served this game a lot more than something like the Albion storyline where we just go after a generic bad guy, a generic military type bad guy. So yeah, I think the focus of the story was wrong and of course that is something you can't exactly fix with patches. Uh, so yeah, they should have gone with something more interesting. Now moving on to the next part of this review, that is gameplay. And I would use one word to describe gameplay and that would be fantastic. And yes, I am doing that. Now, in terms of what you are actually doing in gameplay, you are hacking, you are shooting, uh, you aim, stealth, you are like going in, trying to take some guys out, all of that. And I really enjoyed that. Like the stealth is surprisingly tight. And especially if you're playing as someone like the spy and you have a silenced uh, weapon, like a silenced pistol, Stealth is actually really good. Honestly, it is very good. And as far as combat goes, well, if you play as a hitman, you can just gun through and it never really feels like it's uh, really particularly challenging. 
But I again I have to stress on the fact that I was not playing on the hardest difficulty. I was playing on the normal one. Normal is not that challenging. I only had my characters die like three times in the entire story. So yeah, maybe if you are on a higher difficulty, it will be harder. But yeah, I was mostly trying to play stealth. That's why I used the spy a lot. I more than I used hitman, uh, hitmen. But yeah, that's where I'm coming from. But overall, I loved it, and that is not the end of gameplay because the bigger the big elephant in this room is the recruit as a, recruit anyone and play as anyone, and that is a beautiful system. And the reason why I said that is because this is quite possibly one of the best new innovations I have seen in a game in a long time. Like this could fundamentally change the way NPCs work in video games. This could this could fundamentally change how we see protagonists in video games. Like not every game needs to have a one single protagonist. I mean GTA V had three because they were trying to say the story of three different protagonists. But just imagine the kind of things that can be achieved with these sort of systems. And of course, this is the first attempt at a system like this because this has never quite been done. Actually, you know what? This has never been done. There have been randomly generated characters that you could play as. But it was never like just you see this guy on the street, you pick that guy up and you play, and that is not even the end of it. Like I have seen so many recruits. Like uh, I had one of the recruits saved in my list, and I was just going around the world randomly, going around the world, and I saw this uh, some sort of a grayish thing, and they say like, okay, this is the husband of this particular uh, person or the therapist, and they were being like uh, kicked and beaten up by Albion. So I killed. The, I basically shot the Albion guard, and they contacted us. They're like, "Yeah, I want to join because you helped out my friend." They are tracking all that because you can see those things in the profiler. So yeah, they are tracking a lot of things. The thing that I missed there, and I'm adding this post, so this kind of uh, feels a little janky. But uh, sorry about that. The thing is, uh, the recruitment missions themselves. I have talked about uh, the variety of the recruits, but the recruitment missions themselves, they are kind of repetitive. And in fact, within the first maybe two three hours, I had pretty much already seen all the kinds of recruitment missions there were. So that is actually a problem with this game. So this game has some very repetitive elements, but again, you need to consider the fact that this is basically a randomly generated open world event. It is going to be repetitive. And considering all that, it's not that bad. It's actually kind of good. I would say this is the first next-gen game that we have. Like, yeah, you can say the graphics are not that great, and especially I was not playing exactly with ray tracing. So yeah, the graphics are pretty much a slight improvement on Watch Dogs 2, and it does look a bit dated in some areas. But that's not it. The real innovation here, the real reason why I'm saying that this is probably the first true next-gen product. is because of the gameplay design of how the systems are working this is a very complex open world and i can understand why the bugs are there i just wish that they would have delayed the game to further fix it but again that's uh, that's for the next category and speaking of which let's move on to the next category that is performance and stability this game is absolutely broken uh, there there is no two ways around it i have already made three videos on this and i really don't feel i think need to elaborate i mean in the beginning the game wasn't even using my measly 1050 ti the game doesn't work for the most part the driving still causes a lot of stutters which you will be seeing in some of my gameplay videos um yeah and not to mention the crashes that are still happening like uh, watch dogs they have announced that they are coming out with a patch that is going to come out today So that will fix the team crashing issue. So that is fine. But other than that, it's still crashing right now. As of now, as I'm reviewing this game, the game is still crashing consistently. So keep that in mind when you play this game. Now, I do think that these technical issues are really holding this game back. In fact, I think if these technical issues weren't there, and if this game maybe released in the February or March, this could have been a really good experience. especially with the multiplayer as well because the multiplayer is also coming and especially with the whole thing and scroll got going on got going on it could be a brilliant experience but sadly it's not that it's anything but a brilliant experience and it's really sad that they didn't take the time to actually fix the game before releasing it 
and i know i am wasting a lot of my time talking about this because i really want to talk about this because a lot of people i have seen a lot of people do this especially in the uh, in twitter and reddit say that you oh, know the developers and the testers they are rubbish they should have worked on this before releasing guys they are not the problem here the developers the testers they are doing their jobs they have been told this is your deadline you need to give us a working build of the game by that time even though it is a very unrealistic deadline and plus consider this if there there are testing teams in ubisoft i was a tester once i know and consider the fact that there were three major games that ubisoft re is releasing within two months so all the teams are already stretched thin they don't have many other resources to work with instead of doing that if they would have just concentrated and focused on one game and made one game a very polished quality product and then separated these games by 2 3 4 months then that would have ensured the quality this is something that uh, that you have to blame the ubisoft high management for not the developers and definitely not the testers and now moving on to the next section which is summing up what i have said now what this game could have been i just keep imagining what this game could have been i mean even without the technical issues there are a lot of issues with this game because for example uh for some reason i can't uh, enable uh, like equip a silenced pistol on my hitman doesn't make any sense like i can't buy melee weapons or like equip melee weapons to my operators i can't equip uh, shotguns or anything like that to my operators and that really restricts the kind of gameplay style you are going for you can't have like a jack of all trades but not really the master of any it's not a case of that it's basically you are very restricted to the archetype that you're picking and for me i use the spy a lot because they have the silent special they also have that jamming thing which jams all the enemy weapons in case you ever need it so that was handy uh but other than that the only other archetype i really ever used was the hitman because they were just that good I I really feel that if they could you know add a few things like oh, I again why are there no barbers in the game like yes randomly generated characters are there but I still want to customize them because I want to make them their own so yeah some sometimes I just find some really good face really good voice but not such a good hairstyle uh, and that ruins the look and so I want my protagonist to look good uh, and also like speak in a coherent voice. If I wanted to look at an idiot I would look into a mirror. But that is my point. So the system has its flaws. These are flaws that can definitely be fixed. But as of now they are not. So that is something you need to keep in mind. So is this a good game? Absolutely. There is no doubt in my mind when I say that this is a really good game. But should you buy it? No. Well, maybe. See what i would say is that if you get it like a deep deep sale like you are getting this for 20 20 bucks or 15 bucks maybe go for it right now but again you know that is the thing with ubisoft games and that is something that really disappoints me about ubisoft games is that they have so much potential but they almost never realize that potential like they are two steps away from being a great game but they are still two steps away and that's what makes them mediocre and that's what makes it even more frustrating when i judge these sort of games like i love ubisoft games but i cannot deny that every single time that i play ubisoft games i am always disappointed because of the scope of the game that is not being realized like this game had such a huge scope and it's not even partly realized so that is what really disappoints me about this game but it is still a good game It is quite possibly the most innovative game to come out this year, right behind Bullets Per Minute, in my opinion, because that was again, as I've said before, that was awesome. So yeah, this is still one of the most innovative games to come out this year, and I applaud this game to try something different. Because in an industry where pretty much every single publisher, including Ubisoft, basically just recycles their games, recycles their assets, and just pushes other games out just for the bottom line. taking a risk like this is something that i should praise now in the summing up section i also wanted to include one small reference to something else which should influence your decision on buying this game 
Now, I usually don't talk about this. In fact, none of, in none of my gameplay videos I have ever talked about this. But since this is a review, I need to talk about it. And that is the microtransactions. This game has a season pass. That season pass has its own separate DLC. So that will come with the season pass. And apart from that, there is also an in-game store where you can buy uh, different clothing items, different prestige operatives. So essentially, they are hand-making these operatives and the only way you can get them is to buy them. And I hate that. Because in a game where you are supposed to be able to recruit everybody, you, you handcrafting a few characters and then selling them instead of having these people in the world is not the right approach. It is not the right approach. And I feel Ubisoft still hasn't learned its lesson as far as monetization is concerned. Now, I can understand them sell, uh, selling like clothes and stuff because eventually this is going to be a live service game because after the multiplayer comes out, I'm assuming it's going to be a live service game. And well, that's really all I can say about this because yeah, even with that, I do not agree with this monetization system because if you want to have microtransactions, then do not have a season pass. If you have a season pass, then don't have a microtransaction system, especially in a game that costs $60. It is not a $10, $20 game. It's not something like Rainbow Six Siege where the game itself is so cheap that, okay, you, you know what, fine. If you are monetizing things, that is fine. But in this, a $60 single player title, you have no right to put in microtransactions. And don't give me that shit about, you know, the games costing more to make. Yes, the games cost more to make, but you, all, you guys also sell a lot of games. There is no reason to bump up the prices using season passes or even bump up the prices to $70. That is bullshit. But again, that is something with the industry that has actually got nothing to do with this game. Now moving on to the final area of the review and this is where I'll give this game a score. And the score that I am going to give this game is a 6 out of 10. Now after praising this game so much, after saying that it is innovative, I am giving it a 6 out of 10. And I do not feel like that's a harsh rating because the way this game was launched, in fact, it is lucky that it's even getting a 6. Because I already did this review once and I was ready to upload it. In fact, I already uploaded it on my YouTube channel and I was about to go live. Like I, wa I was about to put it live, but then they announced a patch and the patch came out and the save game started working. So I thought maybe I should just give this another chance. So they are actually very lucky they are even getting a 6. So with the myriad of technical issues, with the game that is that has a mediocre story, and with some bright spots here and there, but mostly a mediocre story, with a gameplay that even though it is fantastic, as I've said with my own words, it could still have been a lot more than what it was. And yeah, this a six seems like a very generous score for this game. As I've said before, if you get this on like a fifteen or twenty bucks, maybe go buy go buy it, but. Uh, if you are trying to buy it on full price, I will not recommend this game to you. Um, so yeah, this game is definitely playable now. So if you absolutely want to experience it, yes, it, you can definitely go through the entire game and finish it. But it is still very much broken. And I better not see yet another Ubisoft pro product that is broken. Like this is the last straw. Because Assassin's Creed Valhalla is still broken for me. Legion is barely working. I don't know what's going to happen with Immortals Phoenix Rising because as I've said before, I'm not going to buy it day one anymore. So I better not see another broken Ubisoft port from now on. You, better, you guys better be careful about this shit. Because I honestly, the next time I see something like this, if I if I see a yet another broken Ubisoft port, I am going to give that game a zero. But that's where I am. Anyway, if you do enjoy my content, then definitely consider pressing that like button. I know one of my subscribers was really looking forward to the review, so here it is man, it's for you. And well, if you like it, again, press the like button. And if you are someone who is just finding out this video from different sources or maybe just randomly came across it, do consider subscribing to my channel because that helps me out a lot. Because that makes me happy. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, I leave you guys with it. So, peace.